hopefully we have some sound. Hi Piggy Sue, can you hear me okay? Hi Jenny, I'm hoping this time that I've got the sound. Can you hear me okay, Jenny? Hi, Abs. Hi, Pam. Can you give me a thumbs up or an okay if you can hear me okay? Loud and clear. Thanks, Jenny. I'll just wait for a few more to arrive, just in case. Hi, Jane. Brilliant. I've actually managed the sound. Well, that's a good start. Hi, John. Hi, Frankie. Hi, Kath. Hi, Miriam. I'll just give it a few more seconds, just for a few more people in case they want to join. Hi Kay. It's a miracle you can hear me Kay, after the disaster of yesterday. Hi Corrie, thanks for joining me again. Uh, first of all, while, hi Belinda, while a few of you are here who were here yesterday, um, I just want to send an apology for my rubbish camera angles. Um, I'm literally very new at this live Facebook Thing, so you have to bear with me because me and technology are just a disaster. Hi AOT, uh, hi Wendy. So I'm hoping today I've got slightly better camera angles. Hi Jenny, uh, my craft room is so small that it's very difficult to get a decent camera angle. So I'm hoping that today's is a little bit better for you. So can everybody see everything okay? If I get a thumbs up, thumbs up, you can see everything okay. Now, I thought, because my camera angles were so rubbish yesterday, if you want to see any of the stamps again at the end of the video, just give me a shout and I'll run through them again because my camera angle was diabolical. So, brilliant, I'm glad you can see okay. So, we'll make a start. So, the idea is that we're going to make this accordion. Uh, looks good, thanks Jenny. <laughs> We're going to make this accordion today. Uh, it's a simple accordion, um, nothing too complicated. Um, again, adding layers to my design and we're actually using paints. Hi Anna Marie. I'll try and remember to look at my iPad as well so that I can say hi to everybody. Hi Karen, hi Pam. Um, and I didn't want to make it too complicated. I just wanted to do something quite simple so that I didn't keep you too long. So we'll make a start. So I've actually created an accordion from white card and the card is four inches in width and nine inches in length. And I hi Liz and I've actually scored at three inch intervals uh, so that that makes me accordion. Now you can go direct to the accordion and use your inks there um, but I tend to cut another piece of card and create on them because I find it easier that way and it gives the card more stability for me. Hi Monique, hi Sylvia, hope I'm pronouncing everybody's name correctly. Thanks for joining me everybody um, and I've got three pieces of card that I've cut to the exact size of the accordion and we're going to decorate them all the same. I'm using Dina Wakely acrylic paints and a brayer. So we'll begin with our first layer. If you can't see anything or my angle's not right, please give me a shout. Hi Monique. Um, I'm actually beginning with acrylic paint olive and we're using the smallest amount of paint. I tend to use small amounts because I can't take the paint away, but I can add it. And I'm literally braying the paint very lightly and then bringing that over my card. If you're not happy with the depth, then you can add more paint but it's so much easier to add paint than it is to take it away. So I bray it really lightly. Hi Natalie, and again I can use that paint. You don't want every piece the same, so you want some pieces lighter than others or some pieces darker than others, just to give it some variety. And I tend to bray my paint out quite a lot onto the glass mat or your non-stick craft sheet, just so that it's a very thin layer of paint that I'm working with. So we're using all three pieces of card. This, this video won't be too long, so I am going to decorate all three pieces. Could you move towards the white mats on the board a bit? So move this way, Jenny. 
Move that way. Can you see me a bit better, Jenny? So then I am going to use my next layer of colours. No problem, thanks, Jenny. I need the feedback. Um, so now we're using a, a slightly darker colour because I like to add layers. And I know that you should look at the colour wheel and you should bear that in mind, but I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just carefree and I go with what other colours. Sorry, lost feed. Hopefully the feed will come back, Kay. Um, so I tend to go with colours that I enjoy using and that I think are fun. I don't tend to look at the colour wheel and say, oh, I can't use this or I can't use that. I know there are rules, but when it comes to craft, I'm just free and easy, I'm afraid. Okay, so we're adding a touch of the Sedona. I love the names of the paints. And again, this is a very light touch of paint. Hopefully you can see this. Because I need to keep some of my glass mat free so I can do it. And then... If you could see how small my craft room was, you'd realise how little space I've got. The, the glass mat actually only just fits on my desk. That's how small my room is. Um, <laughs> you make a messy craft to look tidy. <laughs> Hi, Cassie. And then I'm just adding light layers. And as you can see, each one is, it looks totally different to the other. It's up to you how, how much paint you add and how little paint you add. But I like to add light layers rather than adding big chunks of paint. As I say, you can always add it, you can't take it away. And I do like to go against the edges of the card because sometimes that gives a nice effect and gives some depth to the edges. So I do like to do that as well. So that's our second layer of card. Now I'll just wipe that colour away just so that we don't get contamination with our next colour. Our next colour is Peacock. You can use any paints for this technique. It doesn't have to be Dina Wakely. It can be your Tim Holtz. It can be Deco Art Media. It can be any paints that you enjoy using. And then we're adding... Bring it, I'm listening to Jenny now. Bring it over here. <laughs> so we're adding a light layer of the turquoise. And this, it looks like you're, hard, you're hardly adding any. But it, the little touches do make a difference. And once you've done this a few times, you'll get used to the light touch that you need to use because you're hardly using any ink at all. Okay, so we'll bring those in. Hopefully, the space that I've got, you can see all three lined up together just so you can see the background. Let's try Bayer for backgrounds. Karen, it's brilliant for backgrounds. Yes, I like the Dina Wakely ones because they are opaque uh, and you need very little paint, so it's ideal. I thought you were supposed to put your mess on the white part of the mat. <laughs> I put my mess anywhere, Belinda, I'm sorry, but I tend to use my glass mat for braying like I would my um, non-stick craft sheet. And I tend to use the Distress Ink, so I'm using direct paper. I use them on the white mat, but we're all different, so thanks, Natalie. Um, but yes, I tend to use the glass mat anyway, but it's whatever you prefer to do. I know there are rules for everything, but I'm free and easy and do it just the way that, that, that makes me happy. At, at the end of the day, crafting is about having fun. Uh, it's not about too many rules and regulations. Um, so I love the, the glass mat. It's just so easy to work on. It's so easy to clean up. So that's our first layers. Um, I use the paints and inks on the glass as well. <laughs> Um, so that's our first layers and now, as most of you probably know by now, I like to add delicate layers to my designs. So we're going to begin with a stencil and we're using um, a Toire de Moise stencil. Uh, I love this colour combination too, John. Hi Leslie. Um, so we're using um, a Abs's stencil. Hopefully you can see the stencils a bit clearer this time with no glare. Um, I'm learning. I'm learning. Practice makes perfect. Um, all on the glass mat. <laughs> um, so no problem, Belinda. You go with whatever you know, whatever you enjoy doing. I think it's just whatever's easy for you. Um, I just know that you're not meant to use, you know, your alcohol inks on the white mat because that that stains it. Um, so right. So now we're going to do a mono print with our stencil. Now, I love stencils like this because they're just so easy for adding little layers. So, we're going to do a monoprint. 
Um, I could apply the ink directly to the stencil with a piece of cut and dry foam, but I just don't want to do that. I want something a bit lighter than that. So I'm adding my Distress Ink Black Soot to my stencil. I've got no kitchen roll, so excuse my head. This is what I like about working from home. You can, I already heard that. <laughs> um, I like working from home because you can just reach for everything. So I just spritz the ink lightly with water. And then we're going to place that stencil ink side down onto the piece of card. Just give it a, a few seconds for it to make good contact so that the ink does make good contact with the card. And then you can lift that up and then there is some ink still left on there. So you could use that again and get a lighter transfer. I'll just move up again so you can see. Hi Beverly. Um, so that just gives you, if I lift that up, hopefully you can see that a bit closer. I'm a little bit behind from you on the iPad, so hopefully you can see that. It just gives a nice little touch here and some stenciling there. Uh, and the idea is that your stencils, you can use bits of your stencils rather than the whole thing. So we're going to repeat that on the other um, accordion pieces. So again, try not to get the edges of your stencil. Just wipe that clean if you get the edges of your stencil because you don't want these edges, because you don't want any harsh lines on your work. So spray that lightly and just wipe anything off here that you have here. Sorry, I'm trying to work this end. So then we dab this again. I like this because it's quite random. Hi Alison, you should try it Karen. It's a really easy technique and just, for me, it just adds a little, a little more interest to your, to your artwork. And if you don't want anything too complicated, this is really easy to do and doesn't take too long either. You can dry this with your heat tool, but for these purposes, we'll just dab this dry with the kitchen roll. I'm trying to make it so that you're not, I'm aware that it's tea time and I don't want to keep you too long. Uh, thanks, Alison. Um, any water, water spritzer will do, Natalie. You can use any, you can get them from anywhere, Poundland anywhere, just little spritzers. Um, so that's the second. Then we'll do our third one. Obviously you can move around the stencils and get small circles, big circles. We'll use a bit more of the stencil this time. Again, spritz with water. I think this Facebook Live is a wonderful way to communicate with your followers. I was a little bit nervous about doing it, but I think it's a great way to communicate. If anybody wants to give it a try, I'd recommend it. It, it. It's nice and easy. You've got all your products at hand. You don't have any travelling. It's wonderful. So there's our second print. We'll just add another one there. Thanks, Ali. I really like this colour combo. I really like the, the olive. And because we're just adding light layers... Sorry about my head. Just because we're adding light layers, it, you sort of... You really get a lot of interest because one layer... You love Facebook Live as well, Belinda. Yes, I've seen some of yours. They're fantastic. It is easier than travelling across the country to studios, Jenny, especially when it's five hours travelling. This is so much easier. Oh, thanks, Karen. Um, so now we've done that, we need to do a bit of stamping. So let's find my stamp set. So we're using the Nature's Garden. Do you know, it was actually harder to name the stamps than it actually was to design them. I'm useless at thinking up names, absolutely useless. So this one's called Nature's Garden. It had to be something garden being me, didn't it? Um, so we're using this flower stamp here. Uh, move it this way. I can hear Jenny in me here. Move it this way. Uh, so we're using this stamp here. Um, and we're using black archival ink. What I tend to do with the stamps when I get a clear stamp, I tend to ink up the stamp and stamp a couple of times before I go on to my proper artwork just to uh, condition the stamp and then I don't tend to clean it. Uh, thanks Anne, uh, I don't tend to clean the stamp, I leave the archival on there um, and I am quite OCD, I do like to keep my stamps clean but you do get a better impression if you add the archival ink, do a couple of prints and then 
then add your print to the to the actual artwork the archival just conditions the stamp and you get a good print then so we'll add one of these to our stamping so we'll add this one here sometimes artwork doesn't have to be too complicated to still look effective uh, hi Sid thanks for joining uh, so and these stamp absolutely beautifully I hope you can see that I'm really pleased with the detail yes they do work great with the stamp platform if you're not very good at stamping uh, the stamp platform is brilliant I've got my stamp platform on one side Jenny because when I'm doing a lot of over stamping if I'm using a lot of paint layers then I'll use the stamp platform I use that quite a bit um, so we'll, we'll stamp again so we'll add this to the second one, next one we'll add this one in the middle now this stamp has some open areas so you could do a really funky background and then colour around the edges so that the funky background just appears in the opening on the flowers uh, it's quite good for that technique as well one more stamping I'll add this one to the side hope you can all see everything okay hopefully you can see hi Marjo I hope I'm pronouncing everybody's name properly I do like to make it achievable Pam because I think if if you don't make it achievable then people don't want to give it a try and seriously there's nothing difficult about it it's it's just about experimenting and adding layers and different mediums you can make it as complicated or as simple as you like and you can still get an effective result I think when you're using quality products then you do get a good result um, and I just love adding lots of layers it just makes a piece really tactile hi Roswana don't worry Roswana you can easily catch it on, on catch up um, so hopefully you can see that detail so then we need to stamp the flower again onto a piece of scrap card because now I want to add some dimension to the flower and another pop of colour I want to bring some colour in from the background into the foreground into the flower I'll only do one of these I have prepared some so that you're not watching me watching paint dry and it's great as well because if you drop anything on the floor I can just reach for it Oh, I hope you, I hope you have a go, Jenny. Jenny, that would be lovely. So, I'm now using a touch of the paint with a touch of water, and we're just going to paint the flower. Now, if you if you the kind of person that likes to use your markers, then you can add lots of markers, like Corrie does. Corrie uses her markers wonderfully, and she could do them justice with lots of layers of colour. I tend to use the same colour I've used in the background uh, in the foreground just so that you get a pop of colour and it sort of echoes the design so we're just painting this flower it doesn't matter if you go over the edge because we're going to cut that out and the idea is normally I would let that dry or dry with my heat tool and then add another layer but I think you, you get the idea uh, that will give more depth of colour because these are opaque but because I'm not adding too much to the edges, you're still keeping the detail of the stamp, even though the, the uh, paints are opaque. So we'll just wipe that. So I've cut some out, you'll be pleased to know, so that you're not watching me cut. So I've cut three of the flower heads, like so. Bring them this way. Do you like how I talk to myself? Um, my children think I'm mad they thought I was talking to myself in the craft room when I was talking to you yesterday so now I've literally cut the heads out and I'm just going to bend those slightly because I don't like flat flowers we want to give them some shape and movement and just bend those slightly okay and then I'm just going to reach over for some glue Let's bring in our accordions and we're going to add this to the flower head and I don't know about you but I think that just makes it 
it just gives a pop of colour just to the design and then add the next one now you could add it to both petals but I quite like the fact I kept one as is and one with the the design on the center I hope you can still you're still receiving hi Louise I'm having a go at Facebook live Louise you should have seen me yesterday no sound wrong camera angle you can always rely on me my youngest says they clearly aren't used to to you chatting away to yourself the <laughs> I'm always chatting away to myself, Jenny. But yesterday, because I was worried about the sound, I was shouting quite loudly. And I think the children, both my daughter and son thought I was absolutely raving balmy. And then when they opened the door and realised I was talking to my iPad, well, they thought I'd lost the plot. So we've now got the three accordion pieces there. But for me, I mean, I'll only do one of these because you don't want to watch me to do three. But there's something missing from the edge. So you could either add black distressing um, always talk to myself <laughs> so you could either add black distressing around the edges and that would bring the eye in but I also like to do a few doodles because my designs are quite doodly I like to draw a couple of scribbly lines and I will turn this so you can see and there's no there's no technique to this it really is scribbling you scribble down the side thanks very much Margie um, hi Tracy nothing wrong with talking to yourself my children think I've lost the pot the plot Elizabeth so now we do that and then I draw a second line I'll just do this on the one because you'll obviously get the idea I don't want to teach you all how to suck eggs uh, as my mum used to say so I've now got the scribbly lines and what I tend to do is I put a few scribbly details inside. Hopefully my hand isn't getting in the way. Can you tell I can hear her chanda talking to me and saying, move your hand so I can see the, the artwork. But I have to rely on everybody. Pooey arrived like, hi sis. <laughs> I love using the hand-drawn border. It just it gives, on one of my stamps, I've actually got a border like this, so I tend to add this anyway. But again, just adding a little detail like this, it draws the eye in and it gives another interest to your card. And if, you don't, if you're not into complicated techniques or you're frightened of giving something a go, this makes your design look a little bit more mixed media-ish. I know mixed media means you use different mediums, but adding different sort of layers makes it look more mixed media-ish so hopefully you can see the drawn yeah I thought <laughs> um, so hopefully you can see that that it just gives a little detail and then if we go back to the accordion all as I've done then is I've stamped out my sentiments bring it over here I've stamped out my sentiments just using black archival and I've coloured the edges with the Sedona media acrylic paint I can't sense it the way I set my iPad up to record Facebook live I can't see the screen you were doing great <laughs> if you could see my setup Belinda the room is absolutely minuscule and I've got one of them trolley things that they have from Ikea and my camera's actually on there and if I move sharply I'll knock it flying <laughs> such a professional such a professional um, so I've added these sentiments to the card and that really is your accordion done we just need to add some background stamping now so we'll add some background stamping if I can find the stamps the other thing is you have so much product lying around that I now can't find my stamps Where's my stamps gone? Oh, there they are. What does Tim say about you just work in this space? I can take up a, a 30 foot room. So I'm using this background stamp here just to add another layer 
Um, so we'll take this off and we're going to use this stamp as is. We're not going to use an acrylic block. Just going to reach for some cut and dry foam, so I'm sorry if I go off camera. I'm wearing my pyjamas. If Sue could see me now, she would be mortified of the fact that I'm wearing my pyjamas on a Facebook Live. She knows I'm always in my pyjamas. But hey, we're among friends. So we're going to add a touch of paint, a little bit more than that. Welcome to my world, living in Bermuda Triangle of my own cream. <laughs> so we're going to add a touch of paint to our stamp. And then we're going to use this as is and add some detail. Hopefully you can see that. You wouldn't have known it. Can you not tell by my sleeves, Jenny? Look at my pattern pyjamas. They're my granny pyjamas. <laughs> I did roll them up to look professional, but it's me after all. So that's the, the detail there. So we'll just add a touch more stamping with the background stamp. I'll only do this on this one because obviously you understand how that works. And that, if we hold that up, completes the design. Hopefully, let's move it that way so you can see a little bit better. Oh, that way, Tracy. Your secret's out. <laughs> so that will just show you that. Let's move that flower back. And then that is the accordion all finished. As I said, a nice, nice, simple card. Nothing too complicated. I will actually blog about the card as well just to give the details again, just in case anybody's missed the Facebook Live. Um, now, I did mention at the beginning that because my Facebook Live, the camera angle was so rubbish yesterday. Um, do Thanks, Louise. Do any of you want to see the stamps again? I don't want to show them again if you're really not bothered. I'm only asking for those that, that didn't see the stamps and my angle was absolutely terrible. So I just want to give you that option if you need to see the stamps again. You missed the beginning, Sandra. Never mind. You can easily record. You can easily watch it on rewind. You want to see the stamps again, Jenny? No problem. I'm just going to reach over for them. How did you do the white splatters? Ah, the white splatters. Yes, that's a good point, Belinda. I'm racing forward. The splatters are with my... Thanks, Belinda. I'm glad somebody switched on. You can tell the nerves set in. My splatters are with a Posca pen, but you could use white paint. Have you mounted the three panels on a separate piece and an accordion? I'll show you that, Rizwana. Sorry about that. So, literally, I've used a Posca pen and I've shaken it and I pumped the pen and then I just flick can you see that Belinda which blog please I'll put my blog address for you Karen uh, um, in the comments at the bottom when I finish the video video so hopefully you can see the white splatters Belinda but I also do the same with white paint as well Sorry about that. I'm just aware that it's tea time and I don't want to keep you all too too much. Um, so yes, that, that gives you the white splatters. And what I've done, Karen, is I've got an accordion. Let me just, let's stick these on. If you're not too bothered about waiting, I can just stick these on so that you can see. Sparkles here. <laughs> so we'll just add these to the accordion. So there you go, Karen. I add my pieces to an accordion piece. So it was four inches in width and nine inches in length. And then you score at three inch intervals to give you the accordion. So you end up with that. Tea can wait. <laughs> That's a good one, Lindy. <laughs> uh, so that just, let me just push this along so you can see better. Um, 
it just takes my iPad a little bit of time to catch up with you. So that just shows you, have I made that clear enough and simple enough? Hopefully you can all understand that. Oh, was that okay for you, Rizwana? I've given the measurements. So you just add that to your accordion. And obviously don't forget the black outline, which I added to one of the accordions, because that black outline makes a huge difference adding the scribbly lines because that draws the eye in. So if you just remember that or add some black distress ink around the edges. We should meet at Sue's in our PJ. Oh, I'm terrible, Louise. Honestly, I'm so bad. I'm such a professional in my pyjamas. <laughs> right, so I'll. that's the sample and I will do a blog post for anybody that's missed um, and show you that in, in more detail with some close-up pictures as well. Jenny Marple's just done the same. <laughs> Right, okay, so I'll show you the stamps now. See if we can get some better better views. I haven't got the, the whole range, but hopefully this will give you the idea of size of the stamps. So, move my paints out the way. So, let's move this along here. So, I now have... <laughs> so, this is Fiona's stamp. Now, we'll hopefully there's no glare apart from the top um, and you can see the image this is Fiona's A7 stamp um, and these are a lovely size if I turn that over hopefully you can see a clear picture I'm relying on Ginny to tell me if there's too much of a glare and gone there is I can see the glare there let me just where's my packaging okay Hopefully you can see that better. PJ Crafty Party. <laughs> so that just gives you the idea of the image. If you bring in the A6 size, you can see the difference in size on the stamps. If I turn it over, if you hold it up towards the camera more, can you see that better? I'm just waiting for my iPad to catch up, Jenny. Can you see that better? More detail. Is that better? Hi Clelia. Hope you're feeling better. So that just gives you an idea of size and on those numbers, yeah, that's better. <laughs> Told you Jenny, practice, practice. This cam the camera angle. What's weird is your iPad is so many seconds behind so you're holding it and think you can see. Now, when you look at your iPad, you're on the next shot. It's weird. So that gives you an idea of the numbers and the sizes. And the numbers have actually got textures inside them. So they'd be great as a background. Hi, Amelia. But you could use those. Oh, I hope you feel better soon, clearly. Um, so the idea is you could use those all on, on the block together. Or you could use the numbers separately on their own. Um, Fiona will probably be in bed now so hopefully she, she won't miss she'll probably miss these hi I, Ada sorry we're going through the stamps again because my angle on the camera yesterday was so rubbish and I'm such a professional so we're having to do it again hi Viraj sorry I probably pronounced your name incorrectly um, here we have one from Olga and I had to have this one because it just reminds me of my little dogs um, okay Barbara thanks for stopping by let's move it that way which way is my camera now can you see that okay yep yeah. sausages are spitting <laughs> so I had to have that one because that reminds me of my pugs and that design is by Olga yes yeah, she'll be out partying it is Fiona's birthday hope she's having a great day Oh, the dog is so funny. I know, it is funny. It's the expression, isn't it, clearly? <laughs> it's the expression. So that's that one. It says, for my, for my ever best pal. And it's got bones on there as well. With these designs, I think there's something for everybody. So if you like your cute designs, mum's taxi required. Thanks, Tracy. Bye, Anne. Um, so there's something for everybody. And this one is a little boy. What's his name? Gabriel. I love the names, Gabriel. Um, the look on his face is so funny. I know. Look at them. I like the I like the arms and legs. The arms and legs make me make me smile. 
and it says you make me smile oh, which is what just what I've just said so perfect size and then we're going on to the border stamps if none of you have seen these um, these are a great size let's take this out of the packaging because it's far easier wonderful uh, size um, bring them on camera I am gone just try again Jane so there we go um, so this is by by Pasha and by Pasha's got a trademark style now where she adds the detail the wording inside the image which is a great um, style and works so well but this would work wonderful for teenagers it worked brilliant for my father-in-law who plays the guitar yes I love the border stamps as well blender I think they're brilliant I just love the size and the fact that you don't have to use the whole thing you can use parts of it as well and it's great for layouts as well exactly I love the border stamps these are obviously in no order because after yesterday's live I just chucked them all back and had to go and do some gardening this is a stencil by Abs. Fabulous stencil. Yes, I love the border stamps, but a fabulous stencil. Um, hopefully you can see them a bit clearly this time. Um, and they're the right way up. And it's just wonderful for doing mono prints and using the paints and inks. Absolutely wonderful. So that's one by Abs. We've got another stencil. This is far better, this is this angle I shall have to remember this and this is a stencil by um, Carol and Co a nice uh, all-rounder looks wonderful with texture paste uh, and paints and inks and crackle paste it looks wonderful with crackle paste so that's a brilliant one to use then we have another stencil by abs this time it's a number one and again, this is perfect for your mixed medias. Absolutely wonderful for mixed media. And adding part of the detail in the background or adding the whole thing. I know Abs did a sample and he used the whole stencil and it looked fantastic. But just using parts of it as well would look brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So, And they're really good quality, really thick. So you can chuck anything at them and you don't get that. You know sometimes when stencils are a bit floppy? And they don't they don't work well with different mediums. Well, this works really well. The, the the thickness is fantastic for all mediums. Abs loves his stencils, so he's designed quite a few stencils this time around. This one here has got wording, sort of parts of a word, and circles, and wonderful for backgrounds. Again, you could use this part, or you could use this part or you can use it all together, or you could use bits of each. The idea is, it, you know, it, it's, it's multifunctional. It's got two, two, two ways you can use it. I want to use it to stencil print. Yes, good, great idea. And then this is my favourite one, the next one. I'm not supposed to have favourites, but we all do. This one. Oh. The, the sticky packaging is now sticking to me. This is... I love this one. I just love the fact that I could use it as a whole or I could use part of it. It's just brilliant. I need to want the circuit and words. To... <laughs> but this one I love. Absolutely love this because you could add something to the stencil. Knowing me, I'd probably add a face or something to the center of that. But I do love that one. It, again, it's because I like the little touches in my designs, so this is perfect for me. Absolutely love it. Now, this is one of my border stamps. Um, again, if I take it out of the packaging, all designed by hand, bring it into the camera. Now I need you. <laughs> Just got my first gel plate. These will be perfect. Yes, they will be perfect on the, ge on the jelly plate, Jenny, I agree. But this one I created um, by hand and the idea is that you can mask these areas off and use the feather on its own or you can use the larger flower on its own entirely up to you or even use some of the fine lines on their own as well uh, this is one of my favorites I was really proud really pleased with how this came out and 
and that says something when it's your own designs because you're always uncertain when your own designs come out but this one really did come out really well I just didn't think it'd get all the detail and the detail is just fantastic and it's just come out really well so hopefully I'll use that really soon and I can give you some ideas so I'm pleased with that one and parts of different images it's even got the numbers that I added in tiny detail so there's little numbers here in the petals and there's dream here and bloom and grow at the bottom I just absolutely love it but I'm biased anyway aren't I so I'm bound to say that but I love them all I think all the designs are brilliant we now have by Pashas we'll have to pull this out of the packet won't we let's chuck this on the floor with everything else look at the size of them that's my hand and that's the size of the stamp huge absolutely huge so you could stamp a journal cover if you've got Eileen Hull's journal you could stamp that in one go and you could add parts of the stamp you could use the face on its own the the larger stamp sizes are brilliant I was worried at first thinking what if I can't get all the detail well I actually used my hand just to stamp with it and it's stamped brilliantly we are getting some acrylic blocks in May we're getting A4 acrylic blocks and the border stamp acrylic blocks. So we will be getting those in May. So, yes, the huge stamps. Perfect for jelly plates. So that's another one. I feel much better about this Facebook Live today because it's just not, not in such a mess. And then we've got this. One. I'm just going to reach for one more. Won't be a second. Take it out of the packaging. So don't don't come in. Sorry, I'm shouting to somebody. Don't come in. Oh, thanks, Jenny. That means a lot. Um, now this is one of Olga's stamps. Now hopefully, if I bring it up to the camera, you can see this skull here. If I get the angle right, come on, catch up, camera. Can you see that skull? So there's a skull in there. There's there's lines in there. You could use the skull, just this part here on its own. You could use the circles on its own and it's just you don't have to think of it as oh I've got to use that whole stamp obviously you can use the whole stamp but you can use parts of it because you've got the butterfly wing here and that would work brilliantly with the circles on its own so brilliant stamp absolutely fantastic the designers are so talented they really are they're just brilliant and they're such lovely people as well and finally we've got to indulge in my stamp this is a um, another A4 one, and I have to say, I, I create my backgrounds by hand. Let me just get rid of the glare. Let me see if I bring it up and it looks a bit better. Machine for the big stamps as blocks. Yes, you could, Chris. That's a, that's a great tip. That is, and this one. The my idea behind this is you can use bits of it for those people who who like to use stamps just as is with no acrylic bark or they can use the dream on its own or you can use the art on its own um, the idea here is that you know you, that you've got a lot of potential and I hope you can see that you know you can use the lettering on its own and I will show some samples when I get them done uh, like you've even got numbers here which you could just use on its own in the background and I actually used some braille paper in the background which are all these dots so my stamp really means something to me because I've used some of my vintage pieces to create the background so I feel like I've put a bit of my heart into making the stamp so I'm really proud of that and I'm proud that Abs has brought it to life and a big thank you to Olga because Olga has to clean up all my images so I do have to say a big thank you to them and then because I didn't do a good camera angle I'll bring in my sample that's, that shows it a bit better I will do blog posts for all the samples just so that you can see them this is the sample from yesterday that I, you didn't see this I made with the big A4 stamp and I've used the flowers I'm trying to bring it up a little bit more so you can see um, I've used the flowers here I've used some little tiny beads and beads here 
and I've used my, I didn't show that stamp, do you remember this one from yesterday? That one, which I love this one, um, because I just think that you can use it on your bullet journals and your journaling, you can use it as a whole background all in one, or use the numbers, and the reason I'm showing you that is that I've used it in the background here, because I use it in a mixed media way. Um, I'm trying to show different surfaces, different different techniques so that you can get a different feel for them. So that uses the flower stamp, the A4 stamp, uh, the little date stamp, um, all in one. So you can add lots of texture. Thanks very much, Pam. Thank you. Thanks, Rizwani. And then I've created another one today using this stamp, which is another one of my A6, A6 stamps, which are Quirky Blossoms. Um, I tend to be more of a quirky flower kind of person um, because I just I tend to use them in that kind of way. I, I use them in a quirky way. I love all flowers, but for me, that's just my style. So I've created a sample today with that one just to show you. Uh, maybe I can do a Facebook Live with this one, see how you feel, because um, I don't want to repeat myself. But this has got a brave background, but I've done it a little bit differently and I've tried to add... A little bit a bit more detail and texture I've added some stitching some random stitching some braided layers just so you can see that you know they can be used clean and simple or you can use them in your mixed media style as well so and that's everything I've got for you today I hope the um, Facebook live the small demo of the accordion was of some help for those that have never done mixed media or or experimented with with the stamps um, I hope that was of some help for you and I want to say a huge thank you for everybody stopping by especially when it's around tea time so thanks ever so much uh, and hopefully if if you do all like these Facebook lives then I will do a few more um, I'll wait for your feedback and see what see what you think I liked the stitching as well Jenny I just thought I'm trying to bring something different to my designs I'm trying not to become stale, um, to try and offer you some new ideas. So hopefully, fingers, fingers crossed, I'll do some more Facebook Lives and, and with each one, I'll get better and better um, with angles and things. But I know you're all brilliant anyway. You all tell me whether to move left or move right. So it's like having you in the room with me. So I love these Facebook Lives. They, they're just much easier and, and it's like crafting together. So I really appreciate you all stopping by. So thanks ever so much and I'll see you all soon. Bye. Bye.